Once upon a time, in a realm far beyond our understanding, laid Ginungagap, an immense yawning void. This vast emptiness, silent and formless, was the beginning of all things. North of this expanse was Niflheim, a kingdom cloaked in ice, where frost and cold ruled with an iron grip. To the south, in stark contrast, lay Muspelheim, a fiery domain where flames danced with wild abandon and the air itself seemed to burn. From the unlikely union of Niflheim's biting frost and Muspelheim's scorching flames, the first forms of life sprang forth. Among these miraculous creations was Surt, a giant born directly from the fire's heart. His very name, meaning Black, or the Swarthy One, foretold his formidable nature. This is the story of Surt, the fire giant. Despite being a giant, Surt did not dwell with the rest of the Jotun on Jotunheim. Instead, his home was within the fiery realm of Muspelheim. He was a fire giant also called Muspel's Magir, and was associated to fire, heat, and destruction. Surt was a majestic and fearsome sight. His skin, as dark as the remnants of a fire long extinguished, told tales of deep, smoldering power. His eyes, shining like molten rock, radiated a fierce intensity. Towering over mountains, he inspired both awe and fear, a living testament to the untamed forces that birthed him. Eventually, Surt found companionship with a Jotun named Sinmara and took her as his wife. Very little is known about her, but it's believed that the rest of the fire giants emerged from this union. However, others believe that the rest of the first giants emerged from the flames of Muspelheim themselves. Regardless, Surt and the fire giants were intricately tied to the events of Ragnarok, which signified the end. Their destructive power and fiery passions were a force to be reckoned with. In Muspelheim, Surt stood not only as the father of fire giants, but he also stood as the realm's sole unchallenged guardian. This realm, ablaze with eternal flames and searing heat, was his kingdom, a place where he ruled with quiet might. Here, amidst the ceaseless inferno, Surt's role was not merely to reign, but to protect, to keep the chaotic energy of his homeland from spilling over and disturbing the delicate balance of the Nine Realms. In his mighty hand, Surt wielded a sword, not just any sword, but one crafted from the very essence of fire. Its name was Surtologi, and it was a powerful weapon, often described as fiery or flaming, capable of setting whole worlds on fire. Its brilliance was unmatched, glowing with a ferocity that rivaled even the sun. This sword was more than a weapon, it was a symbol of Surt's power and authority, a beacon of his unwavering duty to safeguard his fiery realm. Despite the constant company of flames, Surt was a solitary figure, standing amid the roar and crackle of perpetual fire. Yet this solitude was not born of longing, but of choice. In the flickering flames, Surt found contentment, understanding his unique role in the grand tapestry of the Nine Realms. While his wife and children also roamed the realm of Muspelheim, Surt preferred to be alone. For him, guarding Muspelheim was not just an obligation, it was a calling, one he embraced with every fiber of his being. In the timeless ebb and flow of existence, a prophecy began to stir, whispered in hushed tones throughout the realms. This was no ordinary foretelling, it was the prophecy of Ragnarok, a cataclysmic battle signaling the end of all things. In this prophecy, various beings of immense strength would emerge, wreaking havoc across the Nine Realms. At the center of this prophecy stood Surt, a pivotal figure, and the formidable fire giant of Muspelheim. As the legend unfurled, it spoke of a time when the cosmos would teeter on the brink of destruction. At this fateful juncture, Surt, with his fiery sword that outshone the sun, would rise. Leading an army of fire giants, he was destined to march out from the fiery depths of Muspelheim. His role was crucial, his purpose clear, to set the world ablaze, challenging the very gods of Asgard in a battle that would shake the foundations of the universe. The prophecy foretold a clash of unimaginable proportions, where Surt's flames would engulf the cosmos heralding the end of the known world. It was a tale that sent shivers down the spines of all who heard it, a forewarning of a fiery apocalypse at the hands of a giant born from flame. 
As time marched on, the signs foretold by the prophecy began to manifest. The realms felt the impending dread of Ragnarok. It was said that three relentless winters would descend, one after the other, relentless and unyielding, leaving no room for the warmth of summer. Wars erupted like wildfire across the realms, and the moral fabric of societies frayed and withered. These were the ominous harbingers that the end was near. In these turbulent times, Surt's image transformed. Once a guardian, he now loomed as a figure of doom and destruction. The gods of Asgard, vigilant and anxious, kept their eyes fixed on him. They knew that Surt's actions would herald the onset of Ragnarok, the final battle that could spell their doom. Yet amidst this growing unease, Surt remained in his realm of fire and heat. He waited, with his resolve unshaken, for the destined time to fulfill his role in the prophecy. In Muspelheim, amidst the eternal flames, he prepared for the inevitable conflict, aware of the pivotal part he was to play in the fate of the cosmos. His time, as foretold by the ancient prophecy, was coming, and with it the world braced for the fiery reckoning that would soon unfold. When the dawn of Ragnarok, a time long foretold finally arrived. It casted a shadow over the realms. In Muspelheim, Surt, the mighty fire giant, called forth his kin, beings born from the same primordial flames as himself. These fire giants, each a formidable force of nature, stood tall and proud, their bodies forged from the essence of flame and ash. United under Surt's command, they formed an army of unparalleled might. As they rallied, preparing to leave their homeland of eternal fire, the very world seemed to sense the impending cataclysm. The skies above Muspelheim bled red, reflecting the inferno below while the air turned thick and heavy with heat, as if the world itself was holding its breath. At the forefront of this fiery legion was Surt, a figure of awe-inspiring power. His sword, now more than ever, blazed with a ferocious light, casting an eerie glow that was both mesmerizing and terrifying. It was a weapon that promised destruction, a harbinger of the end. Surt stood tall and resolute, the embodiment of the impending apocalypse. His presence alone was enough to make the bravest hearts quiver. The stage for the final confrontation was set in Vigrid, a vast plain destined to be the arena for Ragnarok's climactic battle. Here, the forces of the gods and the fire giants led by Surt converged setting the scene for a conflict of epic proportions. The plain of Vigrid, once a tranquil expanse, now braced for a battle that would decide the fate of all worlds. Surt, wielding his flaming sword, became a vortex of destruction. His every move unleashed waves of fire, his blade cutting through the air with a heat that could melt stone. The gods, formidable in their own right, faced Surt and his army with determination, but the fire giant's strength was like nothing they had ever encountered. His ferocity in battle was unmatched, a spectacle of raw power and primal fury. As the battle raged on, Surt came across Freyr, the Vanir god of fertility. Freyr was a formidable warrior in his own right, striking down the fire giants with relative ease. However, Surt was a different story. As the two clashed, those on the battlefield watched in awe and anticipation. Freyr held his own, giving Surt a fierce and intense battle but he soon realized his mistake. Freyr once possessed a magical sword that was capable of fighting on its own. However, it was given away in exchange for love. The sword was given to the giantess Gerder in an attempt to woo her. Though he was successful, this meant that the sword was not present during the events of Ragnarok. In an ironic twist, Freyr inadvertently sealed his own fate. Freyr was at a complete disadvantage without his sword, when compared to the destructive Surt and his mighty sword. While Freyr did not concede and fought with all his might, he was ultimately defeated. Surt struck Freyr down, slaying the Vanir god where he stood and dealing a severe blow to the gods and the forces of Asgard. The sounds of this monumental battle echoed through the realms. The clash of divine weapons, the shouts of warriors, the cries of the fallen and the relentless roar of flames created a symphony of chaos and destruction. In the heart of this maelstrom, Surt and his sword radiated like a beacon of fire amidst the tumult of battle. This was the moment he had been born for, 
the fulfillment of a prophecy that would reshape the cosmos. The clash of Ragnarok raged on with unrelenting fury, and the once mighty gods of Asgard faced their doom. Despite their valor and strength, they were overwhelmed by the relentless assault. Friar was not the only god to meet their end during these events. The battlefield was filled with heroism and tragedy, with various gods meeting their fate. Odin, the All-Father, wise and powerful, met his end in the jaws of the monstrous wolf Fenrir, a creature of immense power and ferocity. This was a battle of legends, a father against the beast he imprisoned, ending in a tragic downfall, where Odin was ultimately devoured by Fenrir. Meanwhile, Thor, the Thunder God, hero of many tales, faced the mighty serpent Jormungandr. In a battle that shook the heavens, he struck down the colossal serpent, but victory came at a dire cost, as Thor succumbed to the serpent's venom, a hero's end for the God of Thunder. As these battles unfolded, the great cosmic tree Yggdrasil, the anchor of all the realms, trembled to its very roots. The fabric of the universe quivered as the gods fell, and the realms stood on the brink of annihilation. Amidst this chaos, Surt, with his wrath unbound, became the harbinger of destruction. His sword, a blazing terror, swept across the land, setting everything ablaze. The seas boiled in turmoil, the earth cracked open, spewing forth its inner fire, and the skies themselves burned in a conflagration like no other. As the battle reached its apocalyptic zenith, Surt stood at the heart of the Inferno, the executor of the world's end. With a final, decisive strike, he unleashed his full fury. His sword, a conduit of pure destruction, cleaved through the air, its flames engulfing the cosmos. The fire was unstoppable and all-consuming, it devoured everything in its path. Gods and giants, mortals and immortals, heroes and villains. The flames knew no distinction, burning with an impartial wrath that reduced all to ashes. Surt himself, the fire giant, the bringer of Ragnarok, was not spared. He too was consumed in the very inferno he unleashed. The world, as it was known, was no more. The flames raged until there was nothing left but a smoldering void, a silent testament to the prophecy fulfilled. The old world with all its myths and legends, its heroes and gods, was now just a memory, lost in the embers of Surt's wrath. Ragnarok had come to pass, and with it, the end of an era. The cycle of creation and destruction had turned, and from the ashes of the old world, the seeds of a new one were waiting to be sown. As the embers of Ragnarok cooled and a new world began to unfold, the story of Surt, the mighty fire giant, took on a new life. Among the gods and people who survived in this reborn world, Surt's tale was no longer just one of destruction and fear. Instead, it became a powerful narrative about the unstoppable cycle of life, death, and rebirth. In this new era, storytellers and poets gathered around flickering campfires under starlit skies, telling tales about Surt's colossal strength and vital role in the cosmos. They spoke of how his fiery inferno, while devastating, served a higher purpose. The flames of Surt, they said, were not just about destruction, but also purification. Like a forest fire that clears old growth to make way for new life, Surt's flames had cleared the path for this fresh, burgeoning world. In these stories, Surt was reimagined, he was no longer seen merely as a fearsome giant of fire and brimstone, but as a pivotal force of change and renewal, an integral part of the natural order. His legacy, passed down through generations, became a reminder of the ever-turning wheel of existence, where endings give way to beginnings and destruction paves the way for creation. In the heart of some communities, a new form of reverence began to take root. A cult dedicated to Surt emerged, not to mourn the past destruction, but to celebrate the balance of life. This cult did not view Surt as a malevolent force of annihilation, but as a guardian, a powerful symbol of the equilibrium between creation and destruction. The followers of this cult engaged in rituals deeply entwined with the element of fire, which they saw as a representation of Surt's spirit. Bonfires blazed during their ceremonies, 
casting dancing shadows and serving as a focal point for communal gatherings. Torchlight processions cut through the darkness of the night, a moving river of flames symbolizing the journey from destruction to rebirth. These rituals went beyond mere religious practice. They served a social purpose, knitting communities closer together. People from all walks of life joined in these fiery celebrations, united by a common understanding of life's fleeting nature and the constant presence of change. Through these communal rites, the followers of Sirt paid homage to the cycle of life and the transformative power of fire, embracing the idea that from destruction comes new growth, and from the ashes of the old, a new world rises. In the age of the Vikings, a time of fierce warriors and epic sagas, the name of Surt, the mighty fire giant, echoed across the battlefields. Viking warriors, known for their bravery and ferocity, often invoked Surt's name as they charged into battle. To them, Surt embodied an unstoppable force, a symbol of raw strength and indomitable courage. The image of Surt, with his fearsome flaming sword and his role as a destroyer in Ragnarok, resonated deeply with the Vikings. They saw in him a reflection of their own approach to warfare, which often harnessed the destructive power of fire. The Vikings were known for their use of fire in raids, setting ablaze enemy villages and settlements, a tactic that mirrored the fiery end Surt brought upon the world. Surt's influence extended beyond the battlefield and into the forges of Viking blacksmiths. As these craftsmen worked the metal, shaping swords, axes, and shields, they recounted tales of Surt's might and his legendary flaming sword. These stories served as inspiration, fueling the blacksmith's craftsmanship as they endeavored to infuse their weapons with the strength and power reminiscent of Surt's own. From the ashes of the old world, devastated by Ragnarok, a new world began to emerge. This fresh start was a canvas of hope and possibility, a chance for life to flourish anew. The scorched earth, once a reminder of destruction, now witnessed the sprouting of green shoots, symbols of resilience and rebirth. The rivers and streams, once muddied with the remnants of the old world, now ran clear, heralding a new era of purity and clarity. In this rejuvenated world, the legends of Surt and the fire giants did not fade into obscurity. Instead, they were woven into the fabric of the new world's mythology. The people remembered Surt and his kin not just as harbingers of doom, but also as agents of necessary change. Their role in the destruction of the old world was seen as an essential part of the cosmic cycle, a process of creation through destruction that was fundamental to the natural order. Thus concludes the tale of Surt, the formidable giant of Norse lore. From his fiery origins in Muspelheim to his pivotal role in the Cataclysm of Ragnarok, Surt's story is a testament to the enduring themes of power, destiny, and the eternal cycle of creation and destruction. It's a saga that captures the essence of Norse mythology, a narrative rich in symbolism and profound in its reflection on the forces that shape our world and our understanding of existence.